When you want a coalition of alien species to get along, force them to live in the same space station. What's up, nerds? Today's video is all about the fungal-shaped space station and capital of the Covenant Empire, High Charity. High Charity is a space station of immense size and power. Also known locally as the Holy City, this station serves as the government, military, and religious center of the Covenant, a tightly woven alliance of different alien species bent on wiping humanity from existence. From here, the three High Prophets of Regret, Mercy, and Truth ruled the Covenant Empire and supervised the destruction of humanity from upon their holy thrones. So let's break down a ton of its stats and then we'll get into its history and behind the scenes facts. The station is utterly massive, measuring 348 kilometers in diameter, a height of 505 kilometers, and weighed approximately 100 trillion metric tons. That's larger than both the first and second Death Star combined. To put this into a real-world perspective, the Gerald R. Four-class supercarrier, one of the largest warships in the United States Navy, is 337 meters long. That means it would take more than 1,498 of these supercarriers standing end-to-end -to, -end to match the height of high charity. And to get a better idea of its diameter, you could lay 168,000 humans head to feet and still have some wiggle room. Or you could think of it as one-tenth the diameter of the moon, or about 418 times the UNSC infinity. And just to help visualize this a little more, here's how it would compare to ships from other fandoms. There are no speed stats for this station, but it was completely mobile and capable of traversing the galaxy with its escort fleet using advanced slip space drives. High Charity had reactors of its own called founts, but these are only used as backup power. This station receives the vast majority of its power from the engine of a dormant Forerunner Dreadnought, which was left behind by the ancient, godlike Forerunners, who are so advanced that this entire station is operating on just a fraction of that energy output. Not much else is known about how these Dreadnought engines work, but the San Shum, which is the race of the Prophets, were able to activate some of its systems in order to take advantage of this immense power. The total population of High Charity is unknown, but we do have some numbers for the capital city located at the very top of this station. It had a population of roughly 7.7 .7 billion, it's almost as big as the current population of Earth, all contained in this one city. Some of locations of interest and importance throughout the city are the High Council Chamber, the Sanctum of the Hierarchs, and the Mausoleum of the Arbiter. The entire Covenant religion centers around the ancient race of beings known as the Forerunners, who existed in the Milky Way galaxy for millions of years before they suddenly vanished more than 100,000 years before the events of the Halo games. They were extraordinarily advanced, and ruled the vast majority of the galaxy, while the empires of the ancient San Shum and ancient humans were relegated to their own corners of space. The Forerunners left behind countless artifacts that the Covenant would pursue with determination, but the primary objects of their religion are the Halo installations. When you first saw Halo, were you blinded by its majesty? Blinded? Paralyzed? Dumbstruck? The leaders of the Covenant seek to use these Halo rings to propel themselves along the Great Journey, like the Forerunners that came before them, and achieve Godhood. The Prophets believe its cleansing flame will burn across the galaxy, destroying all who are unworthy, and allowing them, of course, to become gods alongside the ancient Forerunners. Halo! Its divine wind will rush through the stars, propelling all who are worthy along the path to salvation. The Covenant have a hierarchical caste system, with different species often being relegated to different tasks. It's important to note that there are many other races making up the Covenant besides the one we just see in the games, with those lowest of cast member species essentially being slave labor aboard High Charity. But let's take a look at how some of the more well-known species lived in the Golden City. First up, the San Shum. The Prophets ruled the Covenant Empire for hundreds of years, dating back to the founding of the Covenant that began with a peace treaty between the San Shum and the Sangheili. The San Shum were the first to discover the Forerunner Dreadnought that powers High Charity, which they determined was their holy birthright. They would actually use it against the ancient Sangheili who believed that the Forerunner technology should not be used. But as you might expect, this higher tech forced them into submission. The San Shum would occupy the majority of the Covenant High Council, though they did share some power with the Sangheili. As the name fits, they gathered in the High Council Chamber, in the uppermost section of High Charity and where the Forerunner Dreadnought was located, and we see these large pillars that surround the city. The Council Chambers was located in one of these pillars, while the Mausoleum was located in the neighboring pillar. Probably the most elite destination among the San Shum was the Sanction of the Hierarchs, which was located high above the Mausoleum of the Arbiter, a not-too-subtle architectural nod to the fact that the San Shum's authority was above the Sangheili. This great chamber was decorated with enormous shards of glass, souvenirs from the countless worlds that they had set ablaze, the infamous covenant tactic of glassing entire planets. The Golden City even had its own day-night cycle. This was made possible by an artificial star, with a day roughly equaling 265 Earth hours. 
The entire environment is actually very Earth-like, other than the fact that daytime seems to take about 10 days long. But the gravity and temperature are very much like what a human was used to, with ranges from 50 degrees to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The entire Golden City floated above a vast field that was rich with methane. This is where the Covenant's population of Ungoy, aka the Grunts, lived. Because they breathed methane and those higher members of the Covenant did not, it was only right to house them separately. But that wasn't the only reason for keeping them apart. The Grunts were one of the lowest combat species on the Covenant totem pole, with possibly the saddest story of all. Their world had no prayer against our might and majesty. And their peoples were quickly laid low, many of them brought into subjugation. When the Covenant first came to their planet, they were little more than primitive beings. The Covenant was quick and ruthless, forcibly subjugating them into service and bringing them by the millions into high charity. And that's where a rivalry with the Jackals formed. A hatred between these two races stirred, and the Jackals would eventually attempt to sterilize the entire Ungoy race. This atrocity was the final straw for the Grunts. They ferociously battled their oppressors across the Golden City, and it actually brought high charity to its knees. Only for a short time, however. And it all came to a swift end when an elite called the Arbiter used a plasma lance on one of his warships to glass the Ungoy homeworld. The superheated plasma caused the planet's methane to combust, wiping out most of the remaining Grunt population. A scene which was broadcast across high charity for all the Grunts to see. If they wanted to keep fighting, eventually their entire race would go extinct. And so, just like that, the Grunt Rebellion was over. But interestingly, the Ungoy would be treated far better after this. Having proven their worth in combat as capable warriors, the Grunts would serve right alongside the Elites, and would be treated with more respect. Throughout the Empire, all of the species that made up the Covenant sought to visit High Charity at least once in their lives. But not everybody could afford to make the journey to see the Holy City. There's a ton more on the different races, but we'll cover that in a separate video. As for its history, High Charity began when the Sandshum Reformists used the Forerunner Dreadnought to escape from their homeworld, taking with them a large chunk of the planet's crust. This crust would become the foundation of High Charity, and the station's construction officially began in the human year of 850 BCE. For real life comparison, the Roman Republic was still a few hundred years away from forming. The station would take over 200 years to finish, finally being completed around the year 648 BCE. That crust layering the upper half of the station actually has some significance to the Covenant, as it is made from the bits of surface of contributing species homeworlds. It is also known as the Skins of the First Worlds. This significant act serves as a reminder that the races of the Covenant are united in their quest to travel the sacred path of the Great Journey. High Charity would become the new homeworld of the Sanshum after their original homeworld was left uninhabitable by a nearby supernova. The Forerunner Dreadnought that powers High Charity almost became the station's greatest downfall. A piece of Forerunner superintelligent AI that lived aboard the Dreadnought was called Mendicant Bias, and it tried to escape High Charity by disconnecting its ship from the Holy City. But the Prophets were able to stop Mendicant Bias' escape and shut him down. Cortana would later encounter this AI on High Charity when she attempts to slow down the Prophet of Truth's escape, which was upon that very same Dreadnought. Cortana recognized that this was not Covenant intelligence, but something else, far older and more sophisticated, as it kept outmaneuvering her attempts to slow down the launch of the Dreadnought. As for the station's defenses, remember it wasn't only the center of government, but also the military. Because of the sheer importance of High Charity, it was constantly surrounded by a seemingly endless armada, made of Covenant warships ranging from Corvette class to the CCS Battlecruiser and the mighty Assault Cruiser. This massive fleet, consisting easily of thousands of ships, remained in High Charity's orbit perpetually, making any kind of frontal attack virtually impossible. But in addition to that armada, the station itself was also packed full of weaponry. All those spikes you see protruding from the lower spine under the crust-covered dome are actually powerful plasma emitters, also known as plasma lances. Among these hundreds of plasma lances were 32 super heavy lances and 1900 lighter lances which actually dwarfed the power of the largest Covenant ships. And because of the shape of this station, it had an effective firing range in almost every direction. These weapons fire a concentrated beam of superheated plasma that is capable of cutting through any hostile ship that dared to bring harm to High Charity. In fact, almost every class of ship in the Covenant fleet has at least one plasma lance, being more powerful than any of the other Covenant weaponry, strong enough to turn any surface into molten rock. As for some other locations of interest and importance, there are the Grand Estates, the Assembly Forges, and the Spires of Gifting. The Grand Estates were located on floating structures high above the fringes of the Golden City. This is where tens of millions of Covenant citizens lived according to their caste and station. Much deeper within the bowels of High Charity are the Assembly Forges the largest and most efficient manufacturing industries within the Covenant Empire. 
Here, the Covenant developed and created the weapons of war, from plasma rifles to battle cruisers and everything in between. My charity didn't have any of the raw materials to make these war machines, so it had to rely on imports from across the Covenant Empire. These imports would arrive at the Spires of Gifting, a collection of hundreds of large docking prongs extending from the lower tail of the station. Each world within the Covenant was required to pay tribute to High Charity, in the form of resources like food and raw materials, hence the name Spires of Gifting. By the time humans get involved in its history, it would be most famously known for its role in the Battle of Installation 05, one of just many Halo rings scattered across the galaxy. This thought invincible space station would unfortunately meet its end here. When battling the humans on the Halo ring, the Covenant erupted into a bloody civil war. The diverse species of the Covenant were torn apart when they were forced to choose a side between the Loyalists and the Separatists, the latter feeling that they were betrayed by the High Prophets. The defense fleet surrounding High Charity destroyed itself as Loyalists and Separatists battled each other, trying to take control of this crucial station. A parasite called the Flood, originating from the Halo ring below, managed to sneak onto the station and began infecting all of the Covenant aliens on board, turning their most important asset into an enormous flood nest. The billions of Covenant aliens that could not escape were quickly infected and became a part of the Flood. The Separatists were unable to capture the Prophet of Truth, but did manage to drive off the Covenant Loyalists, and remained around High Charity in an attempt to control the spread of the Flood. Their efforts were partially successful, but one Flood-infected Covenant ship managed to slip through their blockade and escape. The Separatists would go on to join humanity, whom they had wronged for so many years. The Flood-infected city of High Charity would get away from the Separatists and later crash onto Installation 00, meaning its final end once and for all. The Flood upon it would be contained by an energy shield, but would be inadvertently released by Atriox, the brute leader of the Banished, another splinter faction that rebelled against the Covenant. But that installation would be High Charity's final resting place. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. Its reappearance and story with Atriox comes from Halo Wars 2. And as for its beginnings, it wasn't always meant to have this fungal, jelly-like appearance, with early concept art showing that it would have been a massive Covenant flagship, looking similar to other Covenant warships. Connor Breen, a Xeno-linguist expert working for the UNSC and ONI, stated that he was able to explore High Charity to a, quote, limited degree. We don't know exactly how or when this would have happened, because a lot of the details are fuzzy, but obviously it must have been before that flood infestation. And as it stands now, High Charity is the largest non-forerunner structure in the Halo universe. So that's it for High Charity. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon and PayPal. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon. But most important of all, remember, never underestimate the grunts, and the domain will be with you. Always.